sometimes okay this this i i am here i want to do this but we fuse with our emotions fuse means we identify with our emotions i don't feel like doing it let me give it up so sometimes some students may be studying for an exam and they feel like studying but after some time they just don't feel like studying so our now when the feelings come within us uh, at that time if there is a greater distance between us and them what does that greater distance mean that simply means that we are attentive to observe the feelings say if i open my computer and i type b <coughs> now if i am not very attentive i type b i think bhagavad gita will come but actually bollywood has come and then i find that the browser has gone somewhere else apart from where i intended it to be. so now if i am not very attentive to where the browser is going actually i just type b bollywood.com comes and i start watching over there whatever is going on and then i may not notice that i got misdirected so similarly our mind will bring some default ideas default emotion default thoughts based on whatever we have done in the past if we identify with them then we will get carried away by them but if we understand that these that the emotions that i am feeling they are not necessarily my emotions that means yes there are emotions coming inside me but they are not the emotions i want they are not the emotions i want to i want to experience or cultivate so if i understand that then i can evaluate them. in the ramayan when <clears throat> ram is banished to the forest at that time lakshman goes with him and it is sometimes in hindi movies you are this angry young man so lakshman is like that is very angry he says how dare ram be uh, ram be subject to such injustice and then finally when bharat comes uh, to the chitrakoot forest chitrakoot adriniketan ram so he comes to meet ram and he comes with a full army because he feels i am a younger brother he may not listen to me but if i get the army if i get the courtiers if i get the queens if i get this a uh, priest and all of us together may have a chance of changing ram's mind but when lakshman sees that first they are sitting there in the forest and suddenly they hear a large sound now forest is a place of danger so that's why they are always very alert so they hear some large sound what is this is it some beast of prey like a lion or tiger but it's not just one sound there are many sounds coming So as this many sounds were coming, uh, Ram looked at Lakshman. Lakshman immediately climbed up a tall tree, and from that tree he started looking down, and he saw so huge army coming. And he looked, he saw, hey, this is the Ayodhya army, and he saw the royal elephant of Ayodhya, Shatrunjay there, and he saw Bharat at the head, and now the army was coming with weapons. So now normally. It, sometimes uh, when say a uh, visiting head of state from say india goes to america or from america comes to india australia goes to india then there is a, a royal guard of honor so at that time all the soldiers are equipped with their weapons but nobody is going to shoot over there <laughs> but for somebody who doesn't who is simply observing from a distance they don't know the intention so if somebody is coming with full weapons it may appear they are coming to fight so uh, so bharat had got the whole army with weapons as a guard of honor you know of the whole army is here for you please come back but when lakshman observed as he observed this suddenly anger burst within him and he came down from the tree and he says that wicked son of the wicked mother <laughs> he said you know he is not satisfied after conspiring with his mother who is the mother kai kai so you know kai kai has sent you to the forest she is not satisfied with that 
Now he has come with the whole army to kill you. So here what happened? In Lakshman's mind, there's an autocomplete. <laughs> he saw the army and he saw the army. It could be for as a guard of honor. It could be for aggression. But because he already had that anger, he already had that resentment. So what happened? He did anger. He thought anger. He thought, you know, they've come to attack. And he started to going off on a heavy rant. He said that Bharat, he's come to kill you, but he doesn't know that I will stand by you. And whoever tries to kill you, they will go to death support today at the hands of my arrows. And Ram so is very cool. <laughs> Ram is not our disturbed. Ram has with great stoicism accepted what has happened. So we could say in Ram's mind, he knows Bharat loves me. So he, as soon as he is Bharat is coming, for in the auto completed, Bharat must have come to persuade me to come back. So he says, Oh Lakshman, Bharat's love for me is no less than your love for me. I'm sure he has come here just to invite me to come back to the kingdom, to request me to come back. Is why are you so upset with him? Has he offended you in any way? If he has, he's after all your brother, he'll forgive you. Or is it that in a, in a rush of emotions, you decided to come with me to the forest, but now seeing the austerity of forest life, you are finding it very unpalatable <laughs> and that has made you irritable. If that is the case, then Bharat, when Bharat comes, I will tell him to stay in the forest in your place and you can enjoy the kingdom. <laughs> when Ram speaks like this, Bharat feels so embarrassed. And then finally, Bharat uh, comes and he begs Ram, please take the, please take the kingdom. So here, normally, if in a family, a patriarch passes away, you know, then the successors, the children often fight with each other. Uh, they fight, I want the kingdom, I want the kingdom. Here there is a, there is a succession battle. But the succession battle was, you take the kingdom. You take the kingdom. And finally, you know, Bharat said, please give your padukas. Please give your footwear and I will take it with me. Now, today if two brothers are fighting, and if one brother gives the footwear to another, <laughs> The other brother will take the footwear and beat the brother. <laughs> so, what happened was, seeing Bharat's selflessness, it, it increased Lakshma's embarrassment even more. And then finally, Lakshman, when they, had de they departed, Lakshman sat, approached Ram, and he said to Ram, you know, why do I get angry so quickly? The younger brother, is, he feels so embarrassed by the way he suspected and wanted to attack Bharat. He says, why do I get angry so quickly? And then Ram pats him on the back and he says, actually, you are sentimental. So then Bharat asks, are sentiments bad? Ram says, no, sentiments are not bad. Sentiments are the ornaments of life. But we need to select those sentiments that take us towards dharma and avoid those sentiments that take us away from dharma. So that means emotions are something which come within us and we have to select the right emotions. And for selecting, there has to be a distance. If the emotion comes and I accept the emotion, okay, I'm feeling angry and I become angry. Then, there is no selection over there. So we have to increase the distance. The distance between us and our emotions. To the extent we can increase that distance by understanding that I am not my emotions. My emotions, whatever they come, it's not that we have to reject the emotions. It's not that we have to suppress the emotions. But it is that we have to evaluate the emotions. And Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita, in the 14th chapter, Prakasham cha pravrittim cha mohameva cha pandava nadveshti sam pravrittani 
the nivrittani kaamshati he says that these different emotions will come within us and observe them udasinam vadasinam gunairyo na vicharyate as if detached observe the emotions and how can you be detached by situating yourself at the level of the soul so to the extent i understand that i am the soul i am different from these emotions the emotions are coming but i am different from them i am going to evaluate these emotions and merit and then act so that is possible when we have some stronger foundation or a stronger purpose than the emotions say for example we just come and sit on our computer and then we surf the net wanting to find something entertaining then okay let me look at this website let me look at that that youtube video let me look at the social media i might just go anywhere but if i come to the computer because i want to read a particular article about something and when i'm going there at that time something pops up okay right now i want to do this maybe i'll look at this later or this is not important this is a pop up advertisement i don't i'm not interested in it so you know we can say no to something much more easily when we are saying yes to something else so when we with the come to the computer with some purpose to do then even if some pop ups come up we can evaluate them more objectively so that's why spiritual knowledge helps us because it gives us a spiritual purpose to life the body the mind the body the mind and the soul the bhagavad gita explains that each one of us is a soul the soul is a part of god and as the part of god all of us whatever we do in our life we are meant to do it in the mood of service to krishna so when we have that purpose of service okay whatever i am doing whether it is my studies my job taking care of my family whatever it is i am doing it in the mood of service so then when in the mood of service i am doing something okay this has happened this person is behaving like this this has happened over here that will trigger certain emotions within us but the mood of service will ensure okay how can i serve in this situation how can i serve okay i can you know i can do this i can do this that mood of service <coughs> makes us sure that we don't get carried away by the emotions otherwise whatever emotion comes we get carried away by 